Lesson 32 is more differentiation. This is differentiation by tables, graphs, and symbols. I feel like we've already done a lot of this. Um, I don't, I don't know, maybe there, I'm sure there'll be small stuff that might be new, but I feel like overall the concepts are there and you have already seen these concepts, which is good because it's always helpful to have just more of a review lesson. So um, there will be times we need to find an approximation of the derivative. Typically, this type of question will be given in the form of a table of values without a specific function. You'll need to identify an appropriate mathematical rule or procedure based on the given data to proceed. Okay, we've already done a little bit. This is, the, you know, my issue. So the table gives the values of a function that is differentiable on the interval from 0 to 1. Find f prime of 1 tenth. Some thoughts here. Huh? Well, but it is kind of slope, but I mean, slope is doing what? Uh, we're just um, a rock, kind of? Well, and that's the thing. Slope is like a rock, mm -hmm. average rate of change, which, based on the fact that we're given a table of values, is what we need to use. Okay, now, it specifically says, now, okay, ah, sorry. First of all, differentiable, what does that imply? You can take the derivative. Okay, it is continuous also, oh. and if it is continuous and differentiable, yes, we can take, take the derivative. derivative. Okay, so we can do that. F prime of one-tenth, so we want the derivative, we want to be near one-tenth. A lot of times we look on either side of one tenth, but can I go on either side of one tenth? No. no. So what can we use instead? One tenth and two tenths. Okay. So those are the two pieces we're going to use. And I'm going to use, I would suggest, a rock. So f prime of one tenth. I'm going to write this in turn or in I, my words aren't there today. I'm going to write it in terms of f first, in terms of the fact that I'm going to do f of two tenths minus f of one tenth. So that's doing my y minus y value, right? Over x minus x, which would be two tenths minus one tenth. Okay, so that's a good way if you need to write it out and you don't have the values or whatever, that's a good general form to put it in. Now let's do a little math. F of 2 tenths is 0.433 minus F of 1 tenth, 0.261 over the 2 tenths minus 1 tenth, which is one tenth. Four thirty three minus two sixty one. Don't yell at all. I got it. Mario and I have already got it. Back here. <laughs> oh, I got it. Point one seven two divided by point one. What is point one seven two divided by point one? One point seven two. Okay, dividing by that one tenth will move that decimal one to the left there. Nice. Okay, got it? Okay, so there's an example of trying to find a derivative based on a table. Moving along. <laughs> Given this table of values, find each of the derivatives of the following at x equals 2. So all of these we're finding it at x equals 2. So like on A, we're going to be finding h prime of 2 eventually. But so that's going to kind of be my second line. Before we can find h prime of 2, though, we need to have an equation for the derivative. We've already done this, though. We did this as part of our lesson yesterday. As I said, I feel like there's a lot of review in today's lesson. So h prime of x. 
Isn't it f prime of g of x? f prime of g of x. Oh, and then it's times g, g of prime. Of g and then times g prime. So it's the derivative of the outside, keeping the inside. So f prime of g of x, then times the derivative of the inside. What rule did I just use? Chain rule. That's chain, chain rule. rule. Derivative of the outside times derivative of the inside. Now we can think two. So we're going to be doing f prime of g of two times g prime of two. Always start on the inside. So I'm going to keep f prime. What is g of two? Three. Three. Times g prime of two. Negative one. Oh crap, I'm writing the wrong area. Negative one. What is f prime of three? Negative two. And negative two times negative one is two. Two. Positive two. This reminds me of like the easiest easier version of polynomials. But it's so much easier. Okay, B. What do the brackets mean? Just extra? Minimum? It's just so you're not <coughs> not parentheses within parentheses. That could have just as easily been parentheses. It's the same meaning. Another thing that drives me crazy with this, they're yeah, not consistent. consistent. Well, and I will say, and I don't know if there's an official rule or whatnot, but it is typical to see brackets around f of x as opposed to parentheses around f of x. I, again, I'm not saying there's an official rule, but that is more common practice. So... Okay, so here in a moment, we're going to be doing k prime of 2. But before I do k prime of 2, let's talk about what k prime of x is. 2 over 3 of x squared. Yeah, there you go. Times f of x. Okay, did we follow that? First of all, it was f of x to the third, so we did power rule. Move the power out front, subtract one from the power. But then it's times derivative of what's inside. We don't know what f of x is, so we want to say f prime of x. Okay? So the 2 doesn't apply to the second. What? I don't understand what you're asking. Like, you need your squared... Yeah, so squared, it doesn't Sorry. apply to the. It doesn't, doesn't apply, apply to the three. To the f prime of x. No, it has nothing to do with f prime of x because so the inside is f of x. So then you're just taking the inside and not taking the inside squared. No, oh. because we already the squared was the power rule. We already did that derivative. Oh. Oh, I see. So it's two. Okay. So now, so it's gonna be three times f of two squared times f prime of two. So, whoops, 3 times f of 2, negative just negative 4, quantity squared, times f prime of 2, 8. You've got 4 stuck in your head for some reason. Or you're doing g prime. I did g prime. Okay. So, 3 times negative 4 squared times 8. 3 times 16 times 8? 384. And the calculator say 384. Yep. I'm sure I got I peanut butter on my calculator already. Did actually. you? Okay, I, I heard Kylie get her calculator out, so that's why I knew there was a calculator in there. <laughs> and the I wanted to make sure there wasn't any more peanut butter on it, because it got in my impress bowl today, so I just kind of licked it off. <laughs> it was like on the corner. Okay. Okay, moving on. We have to do the other two. Yeah, we're going to do them real quick. Yep. Okay, P prime of X. First of all, overall big thing, there is a product. Derivative of one of them. So F prime of X. And then that means I'm keeping G of 2X as is. Product rule says plus. And now I'm going to... G prime of 2X. Keep f of x. Oh, keep f. It's fine either way. And we're going to multiply that by the derivative of the other. g prime of 2x. Times 2. 
times 2. Oh. Because you have a chain rule now, because it's not just an x inside. Derivative of 2x is 2. So we are doing p prime of 2, which means it's going to be f prime of 2 times g of 4, because it's 2 times 2, right? Plus f of 2 times g prime of 4 times 2. Yes, Doug? Does that times 2, does that come off of the g or the g prime? We had to do chain rule on the derivative. So the derivative of g of something is g, of some, g prime of something times the derivative of the something derivative of 2x is the 2. Okay. So notice I don't have a 2 over here because I didn't take the derivative of g in the first spot. I took the derivative of g in the second spot. So that's why we just have the 2 when we took the derivative of g. Okay. So only when you're taking the derivatives. Okay, p prime of 2. Let's see. f prime of 2 is 8. g of 4 is 2. <laughs> Plus f of 2, negative 4, g prime of 4 is 3, times 2. 8 times 2 is 16. <laughs> negative 4 times 3 is negative 12, minus times 2, negative 24. Negative 24. 16 minus 24 is? Negative 8. Or is that what I like to say? Negative 8. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. So, so the, the reason I wanted to go through we, good review of product rule, right? Product rule within chain rule, or vice versa. I don't remember. D. Rule. And this is why we're going through it because we've got to talk quotient rule here. Okay. I like chain rule though. So, overall thing, it's a fraction, so we've got to think quotient rule. Derivative of the top. So derivative of f of 2x is f prime of, f prime of 2x times 2 times the derivative of the inside times 2. So that's derivative of the top times g of the bottom, g of x. Then it's minus. minus. Now it's derivative of the bottom, g prime of x, g prime of x times the top, f of 2x, all over... G of x squared. I don't have enough room for this. Now, I'm going to take a different color, and over my x's, I'm going to write, what are we plugging in? Twos, yes? Two times two is going to become four. I'm just doing that because I'm, there's no way I can fit it in on the bid queue. It was tight enough on my paper. So... Okay, f prime of 4, actually I should just do this on my own, huh? Yeah. Okay. I'm actually on answer key. I do. Oof. Oh, you reduced. I didn't reduce. <clears throat> okay, I plugged my numbers in. I don't know. My work is there. Compare. on Sophie's face just said, whoops, I didn't get that one right. I messed up. Okay. I mean, it just really came down to grabbing the right numbers. Which, yeah. And did we multiply by zero correctly? You know, silly little stuff. Okay. 
This next page is a good page to go over because we haven't done as much with a graph and derivatives lately. We did at the very beginning, back in the beginning of uh, unit mm -hmm. two, but it's been a moment. So let h of x equal f of g of x, where the graphs of f and g are shown at right. Estimate each derivative. Justify your analysis <coughs> algebraically. So g prime of 3. Do I need to draw it on? Can I draw it on? Wait, what? Negative. Why would it be negative two? Danny. No. Problem solved. Do not trust that. All right. Mm -hmm. We're looking at the curvy one, right? Yeah, the curvy one is g of x. That's what I thought. Maybe like highlight those. Yeah, I got. I got negative two. Where'd you get negative two from? Wait. Didn't play one half. Oh. Sorry, I had multiple things written in my notes, and I was looking at this, and I saw the very bottom thing written down, not realizing it was just other information. I thought my answer was five. I was like, how is this five? Okay. 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 G prime of three, which means what do we need to find? The slope. The slope of what? The tangent. The tangent line. At three on the curve G, right? Slow. Let's see if I can make this happen right. We want, so three is right here, yes? Approximately the point three, five. But we need to draw a tangent line. That's the precarious part, right? And a tangent line, <laughs> I'm not disagreeing. A ruler might be more helpful than me freehanding this, but I can't use the ruler on the BenQ. I'm going to go with my first attempt there. There's my approximate tangent line. Okay. Good. That's what I'm saying. Now, in order to find the slope of the tangent line, what do I need to do? Oh. Okay, count, or in other words, you need a couple of points, yes? A couple of points to count between. We can use the 3, 5. What else could I use? 1, 6. Okay. I was personally looking at 5, 4, just because mine's a little bit lower than 1, 6, but it's about there also. And they're both going to give us the same answer. Can you think rise over run if you want? One six. Yeah, because one six, mine's not quite on my, you know. Oh, I went six one. Yeah, no, no to six one. So as I said, I was going to use five four. You know, it's whatever. But you're doing slope. So five minus four over 3 minus 5. So I end up with an approximate slope of negative 1 half. So that's going back to the basics. We might have forgotten those basics, but that's going back to the basics, right? Okay. B. F prime of G of three. Okay. So F prime. What is G of three? G of three appears to be five. Yes. So that means this is becomes F prime of five. So now we're looking at the non curvy curve. We're looking at the pointy curve. Yes. We're looking at f, f prime of 5. So f of 5 is right there. It's a cusp. It's a hard corner. It's a sharp corner. Regardless. Danny!
Yes, does not exist. I just wrote is a sharp corner because, again, you know, we can't draw a tangent line to a point. You can on a curve, but not a pointy point. Great. Okay. Okay, I'm going to have to go back and forth between pages here. H prime of 3. Well, what was H defined to be up above? F of G of X. F of G of X. So if we're doing H prime, let's see. I need this in view. F, H of X is F of G of X, right? Mm -hmm. So H prime means I'm going to have to do what? So F prime of G of X, or if you want, in this situation, you could go ahead and put the 3 in. It'd be different if it's like 2 times, like a 2X in there or something, but if it's just X, you can. So F prime of G of 3 times G prime of 3. So you got an extra parenthesis in there. No. It's just me being... I already made it. No, it's not in there on purpose. Total mistake here. Okay, so f prime of g of 3. Didn't we already do g of 3? Yeah. G of 3 is yeah. 5. So now it's f prime of 5. g prime of 3? Is it our answer from part A? Yeah, g prime of, neg of 3 is negative one half. F prime of five. We didn't do that, or we already did that, and that was D and E. So D and E times um, negative one half, it's D and E. <laughs> so the derivative of H at three does not exist. Okay, f prime of 7. So I'm going to go back to my other page. f prime of 7. So I need my f. I need my straight line graph. 7. Are you saying the final answer? How do we do f prime of 7 here? Use it all just how we zero. Okay. We draw a tangent line. Except what do you notice here? It's the same. It's on a straight line already, yes. So the slope of the line is the slope of the tangent line is just the slope of the line here. Not zero. What is the slope here? The slope at 7 is Yeah, you can rise 1. Run negative two? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So this is a rise over run. Or could you have done y minus y over x minus x? Yeah. Ouch. Okay. Um, I have written in my notes that it's f prime of 7 also is change in y over change in x, so that's at y minus y over x minus x. Because I said change and not delta? Yeah. Probably. Okay, E. G prime of f of 7. So G prime f of 7. Five. Okay, so side note, f of 7 is equal to 5, so this is going to be g prime of 5, excuse me. So g prime of 5 is what I'm doing next. So g takes me to the curvy graph. g prime of 5. Right here? It's on like 3.5. Yeah. 
g of 5 is about 3 and a half. Now, I don't really care about that because I need to draw my tangent line, yes? And... I don't know how I can't ugh, too much going on here can it be at the bottom when you draw the line? yeah it probably will be better that way but something like that oh where it goes to both sides right so this tangent line is going to end up crossing through the curve because of where this the point is okay so, how am I going to find slope of this line? Because if I need derivative at this point, I need the slope of the tangent line. So, what did I use? I actually use this as one of my points because it's definitely a point. And I just estimated it to be 5 and 3 and a half. And then I also used 7, 2. There's some room for air here, isn't there? It did say estimate up top. Okay, it did say estimate. So, makes it a little bit more challenging to do like a rise of a run. But if I use the points of 7, 2, and what is it, 5, comma, 3 and a half, we can do that. So, if I do y minus y, 3 and a half minus 2. 5 minus 7, 1 and a half divided by negative 2. Okay. If I'm doing this without a calculator, I'm going to be honest and say I'm probably going to do 1 and a half as 3 halves divided by negative 2 is times negative 1 half. So negative three fourths. How did you get the f of seven is five? Because you Originally? Oh, sorry. F of seven equals five is what we plugged in originally, and that was just looking at the graph. That was finding f and looking at f. F of seven is equal to, or is that five? Does that make sense? Yeah. Just looking at the graph. Okay, h prime of 7. Well, we already talked about h prime. It's a chain rule, yes? f prime of g of x or 7 times g prime of x or 7. g of 7. Have we done g of 7 yet? We have not. I can tell by looking. G of 7. Oh, okay. 2.73. 3. No, it's not 3. It is estimating, isn't it? Okay. I have written down 2.8. I agree 2.75 is close. It's estimating. So I'm going to go with my 2.8 in my notes. You go with you. Whatever. Okay. G prime of 7. Have I done g prime of 7? I have not. So g prime of 7. g is my curvy curve. Oh, that's the point I just found, right? Yeah. Is that 0? Would it be 0? No. That's no, not quite 0. Dang it. I get it. We want it to be 0. That would make life easy, wouldn't no, it? Would so... Interesting. I went all the way over there. Huh. I don't know if that will even begin to work. Huh. More tangent lines. Oh, that would work better, wouldn't it? So in my notes, I used, rather than using as 2.8 since there's such an estimate, I used 8.3, and at the time I used 1.1. However, it also looks like it goes through 
Oh, it's not exactly through 5.2, though. Uh, you know, it is what it is, right? Were you correct? So I used 1, 1, and 8, 3 to do this. Again, when you're estimating, you're doing whatever works, right? So in order to do that G prime, I'm going to do Y minus Y over X minus X. So in my next step, that's going to be two sevenths. Okay. F prime of 2.8. So now... S prime of 2.8. Ah, there we go. So 2.8 is somewhere like right here, yes? Mm -hmm. So we are looking for that awkward point, but I don't need to know what that point is. It's F prime, so I need to know the slope. What is the slope at this point going to be? I pick those two points, right? Rise 2, run negative 1. So that slope is going to be negative 2. So then I have negative 2 times 2 sevenths. Negative 4 sevenths? Wow. Okay. That was so fun. Okay. So I have to do 3 negative 7. 3 negative 7.